think the challenges of water resource management are similar anywhere that you are in the world. You're, you're trying to balance responsible and sustainable development for your people uh, with the competing uh, uses of hydropower, of water supply, of, of irrigation, of navigation, of flood risk management, uh, fish and wildlife and the environment. It's no easy task, but uh, you know, it's one that water resource managers all over the world have to undertake for the good of the system that they're stewarding and for the people that they serve. There's really no, nothing like the Tonle Sap in the United States. We certainly have uh, coastal communities, we've got uh, coastal ecosystems, but there's nowhere that I'm aware of where in, in a freshwater environment where we combine uh, you know, that, that, uh, that type of community and ecosystem in a single place. Um, but that said, there are definitely uh, similarities. Uh, you know, many of our coastal communities are facing similar challenges uh, in terms of the, uh, the changes in, uh, in, in water flow and, and, and predictability of rain and climate. Uh, that have impacted the Tonle Sap since apparently 2011. We also see communities that are faced with similar challenges uh, when it comes to policy decisions uh, made far away from, from their location uh, that have local impacts. And the first of those takeaways is uh, that we have common challenges no matter where we are in the world in terms of water resource management. We've got uh, systems that are under pressure, we've got water which is a precious resource, uh, and, and we have uh, uses of that water that are always in tension. Whether we're trying to generate hydropower, we're trying to uh, protect the environment, we're trying to allow for navigation, uh, we're trying to protect populations from floods. Uh, it's no easy task, and, and sometimes we, we uh, see that those those uses compete with one another and it's very challenging to get that right. The Tonle Sap in particular, the takeaway for me is just how unique and how special that environment is and that ecosystem. Um, it's absolutely critical to the economic security of, of Cambodia and the Mekong Basin. It's critical to the, um, the food security. It's, it's critical to the environmental security. Um, and there really is no place like it in the world. Uh, so that to me is the, the key takeaway, is just how unique and special that is, and therefore how worthy it is of, of, uh, of investment. Um, how critical it is that we, working through the Sister Rivers Partnership and the Mekong River Commission, find ways to, uh, to share best practices, to share technical advice that is gonna be critical uh, for uh, the Tonle Sap and really the whole Mekong Basin. Uh, the second one is that, uh, you know, in, in the United States, we primarily manage the Mississippi River as a uh, watershed within a single country. Here in the Mekong, it's much more complex. You've got six countries uh, who uh, are all um, responsible for, for managing the, the water from upstream down to the, to the uh, delta. Uh, and, and as it crosses those boundaries, the coordination is always very challenging, much more so than if it's just in a single country like in the United States. And uh, the coordination that's required to do that effectively, to do that efficiently, to do that responsibly, it's no small feat. And, and I think uh, what I've taken away from this is the responsibility that the Mekong River Commission has to help in that, the role that they play to balance sustainable development uh, with, with uh, the uh, appropriate uses of, of the Mekong River for the benefit of all of the citizens of the countries uh, who the, the Mekong 